my sister lied to get me kicked out of the house. So when my parents came begging for help, I turned my back on them. I was just 18, ready to start college, and suddenly I was homeless. Allison is four years older than me, and from the time we were kids it was clear she was the star. My parents didn't just like her more, they practically worshipped the ground she walked on. If she aced a test, they threw her a mini-celebration. If I did the same, it was more like, oh cool, what's for dinner? You get the idea, it was always like that growing up. Nothing I did ever seemed to matter because she would always outshine me, dot. By the time she went off to some top business school, my parents were in full-blown proud parent mode. They paid for everything, her tuition, her apartment, her fancy wardrobe. Meanwhile, I just kept my head down and tried to figure out how to survive. So when I got accepted into a reputable college in the UK to study history, I thought maybe, just maybe, they'd help me out a little. But nope, they shut that down real quick, dot. My parents straight up told me they couldn't afford my tuition. Okay, fair enough, college is expensive. But what pissed me off was that they wouldn't even co-sign a loan for me. I wasn't asking them to pay for the whole thing just to help so I wouldn't be crushed under debt my entire life. But they refused. We argued about it a lot and their excuse was always the same. We already paid for Allison's college, we need to think about our future now. And it wasn't just about them planning for retirement or something reasonable. They were in the middle of starting up some small business and claimed they needed to pour every cent into that. It felt like they were throwing every obstacle in my way for no good reason. They had no problem blowing tons of money on Allison, but when it came to me, suddenly they were all about being responsible and frugal. I was stuck. I didn't want to miss out on my dream school, but it was obvious they had no intention of helping. With no other options, I turned to my Aunt Caroline. She's my dad's older sister and honestly, the complete opposite of my parents. She's a neurosurgeon, super successful, and down to earth. My parents always acted weird around her, like they were bitter about how much better off she was. Especially my dad. He hated feeling overshadowed by her. I didn't want to ask Caroline for help at first, but I was desperate. So one day I reached out and explained my situation, asking if she could help with tuition. She didn't even hesitate. She just said, of course, I'll help. Why didn't you ask me sooner? But I was terrified my dad would find out. If he knew I'd gone behind his back to ask his sister for money, he'd flip. So I begged Caroline to keep it a secret, and she agreed, dot. For a while, things seemed fine. My tuition was covered, and I was finally getting ready to leave for school. That's when Allison decided to ruin everything, dot, to this day. I still don't know how she found out about Aunt Caroline helping me, but she did. And because she's Allison, she couldn't just let it go. I came home one evening after hanging out with some friends, and right away I knew something was off. All my stuff was packed up in boxes, everything, clothes, books, even my bedding. My parents were sitting in the living room, and Allison was standing there with this smug, self-satisfied smirk on her face. It felt like I'd walked into some kind of twisted intervention, dot. My dad didn't waste any time. He threw a stack of papers at me and demanded, explain this. I had no idea what he was talking about, so I picked up the papers and read them. That's when I realized Allison had gone full-on psycho. She'd fabricated these fake emails between me and Aunt Caroline, making it look like I was betraying the family, like I was leaking details about their business plans to get Caroline to pay for my tuition. I couldn't believe my eyes. Allison had actually gone through my laptop, found some real emails between me and Aunt Caroline, then used Photoshop or whatever to twist them into something completely different. It looked like I'd sold out my own family. I was stunned. I tried to explain that it was all fake, but my parents didn't even listen. They just stood there, shaking their heads, saying, we trusted you, and you stabbed us in the back. It didn't matter what I said. They believed Allison, of course. They always believed her. It was like I didn't even exist anymore. They told me to pack my things and leave, right then and there. I was officially kicked out of the house because of a complete lie. I begged them to reconsider. I didn't want to be a burden on Aunt Caroline, especially after she had already agreed to pay my tuition. But my parents didn't care. They said I was a traitor and they wanted nothing to do with me, dot, so that was it. I left with nothing but the clothes on my back and a few boxes of my stuff, and I moved in with Caroline. Honestly, I don't know how I would have survived if it weren't for her. She took me in without a second thought and treated me like actual family, something I hadn't felt in years. While my parents were busy worshipping Allison and obsessing over their future business, Caroline was the only one who really cared about me, dot. For that, I'll always be grateful. 
But to this day, I can't shake the memory of that night, walking into my house, seeing all my stuff packed up, my parents looking at me like I was a criminal, and Allison standing there with that smug look on her face, knowing she had one, dot. So there I was, kicked out of my own home, standing on Aunt Caroline's doorstep with my life in boxes. It felt like a bad dream. How do you go from being part of a family to being homeless in one night? The whole thing was so surreal, but at the same time I couldn't say I was completely surprised. My parents had always made it clear that Allison came first, but I guess I never thought they'd take it this far. Caroline, being the angel she is, welcomed me in without a moment's hesitation. She didn't ask a million questions. She didn't cry. She just saw that I was hurting and told me that her house was my house for as long as I needed. That kind of kindness hit me hard because, in that moment, I realized I had never felt anything like that from my own parents. Dot. So I moved in. At first it felt strange waking up in a guest room looking around at a house that wasn't mine, but over time it started to feel more like home than the place I grew up and ever had. Dot. We started getting closer, Caroline and I, turns out she knew a lot more about my parents and their BS than I ever realized. She'd been keeping her distance for years, only showing up at family events because she felt obligated. Then one day she told me something that blew my mind, dot. Apparently, comma, my dad's grudge against her started long before I was even born. Caroline had always been more successful, went to med school, got married to a great guy who unfortunately passed away young, and lived a life filled with achievements. Meanwhile, my dad was just doing okay, and every time they met up he'd get weirdly competitive. It was like their relationship had become this twisted game of who could look better to the rest of the family. Instead of being proud of his sister, he resented her for overshadowing him in every possible way, financially, socially, everything. I guess that jealousy bled over into how he treated me, dot. So living with Aunt Caroline turned out to be a blessing in disguise. It wasn't just that she gave me a roof over my head and made sure I was taken care of, she made me feel seen for the first time in my life. I started to open up to her about everything I'd been holding inside for years, and she filled in the gaps I didn't even know were there, dot, apparently, comma. My dad's jealousy toward Aunt Caroline wasn't just about career success, it was everything. Her lifestyle, her reputation, even her relationships. She was always the golden one in the eyes of the extended family. They respected her, admired her. And my dad. He felt like he was living in her shadow his entire life. It all made sense now, why he was so obsessed with making Allison into some kind of success story. It was his way of one-upping Caroline. He wanted to prove that his kid could be just as impressive as her. I hadn't realized it back then, but my whole life was caught up in this twisted game my dad was playing, a game I never wanted to be a part of. Dot living with Aunt Caroline was great, but I couldn't completely relax. I kept waiting for my parents to call, for Allison to show up out of nowhere, or for them to apologize and admit they'd been wrong, but of course that never happened. Days turned into weeks, and I didn't hear a word from them. Not a single text, not a single call. At first I was angry, really angry. How could they just toss me aside like I was nothing? Then the anger sort of faded, and I started to feel numb. It was like my brain was shutting off all my emotions just so I could function. Caroline, comma, though, was amazing. She never pushed me to talk unless I wanted to. She gave me space to figure things out, even helped me get everything sorted for school, making sure I had all I needed before I left for the UK. If it weren't for her, I don't know how I would have made it through that time. But even with her support, the silence from my parents was deafening. You'd think, after kicking your own kid out, you'd at least check up on them, right? But no. I guess I shouldn't have expected anything different, but deep down, I still did, dot. About a month after moving in with Caroline, I got a text from Allison. I remember it clearly because it was as obnoxious as she was. All it said was, hope you're doing okay. By the way, don't leave your laptop lying around. That was it. No apology, no acknowledgement of what she'd done, just a smug little reminder that she was the one who got me thrown out. I stared at the screen, my blood boiling. She was taunting me, plain and simple. I didn't respond. What was the point? Allison wasn't the type to feel guilty about anything. In her mind, she'd won this weird family game, and that was that. I thought about texting something snarky back, but I knew it wouldn't make a difference. She'd just get off on it. So instead, I blocked her number and tried to move on, dot. It wasn't easy. Every time I looked at my phone, part of me was still waiting for something from my parents, maybe a message from my mom saying she regretted everything, or even a passive-aggressive email from my dad pretending like nothing happened. But no, radio silence, dot. In the months that followed, Caroline and I fell into a comfortable routine. 
she became more than just my aunt. She became my confidant, my friend, and basically the only family I had left. I started to see how messed up my parents really were. They'd spent so long obsessing over Allison, trying to mold her into some perfect daughter, that they completely missed out on everything else. And when Allison finally messed up, which she eventually would, it would be too late for them to fix it, dot. Just as I was starting to put the pieces of my life back together, I got another message. This time, it was from my dad. It was short and direct. Good luck in the UK. That was it. No apology, no explanation, nothing. It felt like a slap in the face. After everything, all he had to say was good luck. I didn't even know how to respond. So, I didn't. I just deleted the message and tried not to think about it, dot. The day I left for the UK, Caroline drove me to the airport. She hugged me, told me how proud she was, how she knew I'd do great things. It was the first time in my life that someone in my family had said those words to me, and it hit me harder than I expected. I got on that plane feeling like I was leaving more than just my home behind. I was leaving behind the part of me that had always tried to seek my parents' approval, dot. From that moment on, I decided I didn't need them anymore. I had Caroline, I had my future, and I had myself. If they wanted to reach out, fine, but I wasn't going to waste any more energy chasing after people who clearly didn't care about me. I was done, dot. Life in the UK was surprisingly smooth. I settled into college, made friends, and for the first time in years, I wasn't constantly thinking about my family. I won't say I forgot about them, it's not that simple, but they definitely weren't on my mind as much anymore. I focused on my studies, figured out what I wanted to do, and tried to enjoy life without the constant drama that came with living under my parents' shadow, dot, but calmer. Of course, just when things were going great, something had to mess it all up. I finished college, came back to my hometown, and landed a really good, high-paying job. Then, out of nowhere, I got a call from my mom, dot, yeah. My mom. The same woman who hadn't spoken to me since the day they kicked me out, dot, it was totally unexpected. I was sitting at my desk, going over some notes for a presentation, when my phone buzzed. I saw her name pop up, and for a second, I thought I was imagining things. I stared at the screen, my mind racing. Should I answer it? Ignore it? After everything that had happened, why would she be calling me now? I let it ring a few more times, and then, against my better judgment, I picked up. Hello. I said, trying to sound calm, even though my heart was pounding, dot. There was a pause on the other end, like she wasn't sure what to say. Finally, she spoke. Hi, it's, it's your mother. No kidding. Who else would it be? But I didn't say that. I just stayed quiet, waiting for her to explain why she was calling me after almost two years of nothing. She hesitated again, and then, out of nowhere, said, we need to talk. I couldn't help but scoff. Now she wanted to talk. After everything. It was so typical of her, but even though I was annoyed, a part of me was curious. What could possibly be so important that she was reaching out after all this time? About what? I asked, keeping my tone as neutral as possible. We, your father and I. We want to see you, she said, stumbling over her words like she was trying to figure out how to phrase it right. I could already tell where this was going. They didn't actually want to see me because they missed me or felt bad for what they did. There was something they needed, and I had a pretty good guess about what it was. I sighed, leaning back in my chair. Why? I asked bluntly, dot. She didn't answer right away, which pretty much confirmed my suspicions. When she finally did speak, her voice was quieter, like she was trying to sound all motherly and concerned. Your dad and I. We've been going through a hard time. Things haven't been easy since the pandemic hit. And there it was, the real reason behind the call, dot. It was exactly what I thought. Money problems. I hadn't heard much about their business since I left, but I knew it wasn't doing well. Caroline had mentioned in passing how their shop wasn't thriving the way they had expected, and with the pandemic, it made sense that they'd be struggling, dot. But I wasn't going to jump in and save them, not after everything they'd put me through. Okay, I said, my voice flat. I wasn't about to make this easy for her. Your sister, Allison, she's been managing things for us, but. That's when I cut her off. Let me guess, I said, already knowing where this was headed. Allison screwed it up. There was a long pause on her end, which was answer enough. She's. But things haven't been going as planned, my mom admitted quietly, and I could practically see her squirming on the other end of the line. And we. Well, we need help. I laughed. 
I couldn't help it. After everything. After throwing me out, cutting me off, and letting Allison walk all over me. Now they needed my help. The audacity of it all was unbelievable. What's so funny? My mom asked, sounding genuinely confused, like she couldn't understand why I wasn't jumping at the chance to swoop in and save them. You're serious, I said, my voice rising in disbelief. You actually think I'm going to help you? We're still your parents, she said, her voice wavering. We made mistakes, but we need you. I shook my head, even though she couldn't see me. You didn't just make mistakes, mom. You kicked me out of the house. You believed Allison's lies over your own son. You haven't spoken to me in years, and now suddenly I'm supposed to drop everything and come running? She was quiet after that. I could tell she didn't know what to say. She probably wasn't used to me standing up for myself like this. Back when I was still living at home, I would have just gone along with whatever they said, hoping it would keep the peace. But not anymore. I had changed, and I wasn't going to let them walk all over me again, dot finally comma. She spoke, but her tone had shifted. She wasn't trying to be all soft and caring anymore. Now she sounded irritated, like she couldn't believe I was being so difficult. We're still your family, she snapped. You owe us at least that much. And there it was, the final straw. I didn't owe them anything. In fact, they were the ones who owed me an apology for starters, but I wasn't holding my breath on that one. I don't owe you a damn thing, I said coldly. If you need help, go ask Allison. She's your golden child, remember? Without waiting for her response, I hung up the phone. My heart was pounding and my hands were shaking, but I felt a strange sense of relief. I had finally said what I needed to say. They could figure out their mess on their own. I wasn't going to be part of it, dot, that night. I called Aunt Caroline and told her what happened. She wasn't surprised at all. They'd been relying on Allison for years, she said. It was only a matter of time before it all caught up to them. We talked for a while, and by the end of the call, I felt even more certain that I'd made the right decision. My parents had chosen Allison over me, and now they were paying the price. As harsh as it sounded, it wasn't my responsibility to fix their mistakes, dot. For the first time in a long time, I felt free. I didn't need their approval or their acceptance. I had my own life now, and I wasn't about to let them drag me back into their toxic mess, dot. But comma, of course, that wasn't the end of it. I thought that after my phone call with my mom, I was done with all the family drama. I'd finally stood up for myself and made it clear that I wasn't going to be their safety net. I figured they'd just give up and go back to depending on Allison, dot. But I underestimated my sister's ability to stir the pot, dot. About two weeks after the call with my mom, something weird happened. I was having a pretty normal Saturday afternoon just cleaning up around my place when I heard a knock on the door. Now, I don't really get visitors. I live alone, and most of my friends know to text before they come over, so I was a little confused. I peeked through the peephole and guess who was standing outside? Yep, Allison, dot. For a second, I thought I was seeing things. What was she doing here? She hadn't spoken to me in years except for that one stupid text about my laptop, and now she was just showing up at my door like everything was fine. My gut reaction was to ignore her, but I knew Allison well enough to know that she wouldn't leave until she got what she wanted. I opened the door, and before I could even say anything, she smiled like we were best friends or something. Hey, she chirped, all bubbly and fake. It's been a while. I just stared at her for a second, completely caught off guard. Uh, yeah, it has. What are you doing here, Allison? She looked at me with this overly sweet expression like she thought she could charm her way into my good graces. I wanted to talk, she said, tilting her head slightly. Can I come in? I crossed my arms, not moving from the doorway. About what, I asked keeping my voice as neutral as possible, dot dot. Her smile faltered for a second, but she recovered quickly. Come on, can we just talk inside? It's important. I should have said no. I should have told her to leave right then and there, but my curiosity got the better of me. I stepped aside and let her in, though I didn't bother making her feel welcome. I didn't offer her a seat, and I didn't ask if she wanted anything to drink. She was lucky I was even letting her into my space after everything she'd done, dot. She walked in and looked around like she was taking in the place. Nice apartment, she said, like she was trying to make small talk. I didn't respond. I wasn't interested in pleasantries. Okay, Allison, I said, getting straight to the point. What do you want? She sighed dramatically, like she was already exhausted from whatever game she was playing. Mom told me about your conversation, she said, 
folding her arms. She's pretty upset, you know. I raised an eyebrow. Upset? She kicked me out of the house, Allison. What exactly does she have to be upset about? Allison rolled her eyes like I was the one being unreasonable. Look, I'm not here to rehash all that. We both know you've always been difficult. I almost laughed at how casually she said that. Difficult? I repeated. Are you serious right now? You fabricated emails to get me kicked out of the house. That's difficult. She waved her hand dismissively. That's ancient history. I came here because I want to make things right. I blinked, unsure if I'd heard her correctly. You want to make things right? I asked, skepticism dripping from every word. Yeah, she said, nodding like this was the most reasonable thing in the world. I know things got complicated with the family and maybe I overreacted back then, but I think it's time to put all that behind us. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. You think you overreacted? I said, struggling to keep my voice even. Allison, you destroyed my relationship with our parents. You lied about me, manipulated them, and now you're standing here like none of that matters anymore. Her smile faded a little, and I could see she was getting frustrated. I didn't come here to argue, okay? I came because I need your help. Ah, there it was. The real reason she was standing in my apartment. Of course, Allison wasn't here to apologize or to make amends. She needed something from me. I've been trying to keep the business going, Allison finally admitted, her fake smile dropping. But it's been really hard. The pandemic hit us badly and I'm doing everything I can, but it's not enough. Mom and Dad don't want to admit it, but we're on the verge of losing everything. I crossed my arms, not feeling an ounce of sympathy. So, let me guess. You want me to help bail you out? Allison shifted uncomfortably, looking at me like I was supposed to feel sorry for her. I'm not asking for a handout, she said defensively. I just thought we could, I don't know, figure something out together. You're doing well for yourself, right? I figured you'd want to help the family. I couldn't believe her nerve. She was trying to guilt trip me into saving the same family that had thrown me out onto the street. The same family that had treated me like I was expendable. You figured wrong, I said flatly. Dot Allison blinked, clearly not expecting that response. Wait, what do you mean? I mean I'm not helping you, I said, my voice firm. Not after everything you did. You ruined my life, Allison. You turned my own parents against me. And now that you're in trouble, you think I'm just going to forget all of that and step in to save you? No. She stared at me dumbfounded. For the first time in her life, Allison didn't seem to know what to say. But we're family, she said weakly, her voice losing some of its confidence. I shook my head. We stopped being family the day you made it your mission to destroy me. Allison's face went pale. She wasn't used to hearing no, and I could see her struggling to process it. After a long, awkward silence, she stood up, her expression turning icy. Fine, she said coldly, if that's how you want it. That's exactly how I want it, I replied, standing my ground. You made your choices, Allison. Now you have to deal with the consequences. Without another word, she stormed out of my apartment, slamming the door behind her. I stood there for a minute, letting the tension drain out of me. Part of me felt bad, like maybe I was being too harsh. But then I remembered everything she'd put me through, and that guilt faded fast. For the first time in years, I felt like I had control over my life. I wasn't living in Allison's shadow anymore. I wasn't the second choice or the scapegoat. I was finally free from all of it. But comma, of course, that didn't mean the drama was over. I thought that after Allison stormed out, things would go quiet, that she'd finally get the message that I was done with her and all the family bullshit. But once again, I underestimated how stubborn she could be, dot. It wasn't even a full week later when the next wave hit, and this time, it wasn't Allison knocking on my door. It was both my parents, dot. It was a Saturday again. Funny how these things always seem to happen on my days off. I was just sitting on the couch, scrolling through my phone, when I heard a knock at the door. It wasn't a soft knock, either. It was one of those heavy, insistent knocks that tells you whoever's on the other side isn't leaving any time soon. I got up, already having a bad feeling about who it might be. When I opened the door, there they were, my mom and dad, standing together like some kind of united front. My dad looked uncomfortable, like he didn't really want to be there, but my mom? She had that look in her eye, the one that said she was determined to bulldoze her way through this no matter what. I sighed, leaning against the doorframe. What do you want? My mom gave me a strained smile, trying to keep things friendly. 
can we come in and talk? We need to sort some things out. I was tempted to slam the door in their faces, but part of me figured that if I didn't let them in now, they'd just keep showing up. So, with an exaggerated sigh, I stepped aside and let them in. They walked in, glancing around the place like they were expecting something more than a basic apartment. My dad stayed quiet, but my mom went straight for the couch, sitting down and patting the seat next to her like I was some little kid she was trying to console. I'll stand, I said flatly, crossing my arms. All right, she said, forcing a tight smile. Look, we know things have been difficult between us. Difficult? I repeated, raising an eyebrow. That's what you're calling it? My dad finally spoke up, his voice low and gruff. We didn't come here to argue. Then what did you come here for? I asked, not even bothering to hide my frustration. Because I'm pretty sure we've already been over everything. Allison tried, you tried, and I made myself clear. I'm not helping. My mom's smile wavered a little. She probably wasn't used to me talking back like this. That's not why we're here, she said, leaning forward slightly. We're here because we want to apologize. I almost laughed. Apologize for what exactly? Kicking me out. Believing Allison's lies. Or was it that you didn't even bother checking in on me for two years? My mom's face tightened, and my dad shifted uncomfortably, looking like he wanted to be anywhere but here. It was clear they weren't expecting me to throw it back in their faces like that. We know we made mistakes, my mom said, her voice quieter now. But we're family, and family has to stick together. I could feel my patience wearing thin. This was just more of the same. Every time something went wrong, they'd pull out the family card, like it was supposed to erase everything that happened. But I wasn't falling for it this time. You guys are only here because you need something from me, I said bluntly. If things hadn't gone south with the business, I wouldn't even be hearing from you. Let's not pretend this is about family. There was a moment of silence, and then my dad finally spoke up, his voice rough but more honest than anything I'd heard from him in years. You're right. That caught me off guard. I blinked, staring at him. What? You're right, he repeated, sighing heavily. We screwed up. We believed Allison. We pushed you out, and we didn't even think twice about it. And now, well, now things are falling apart, and we're desperate. I didn't know what to say. I wasn't expecting him to actually admit it. My mom, on the other hand, looked like she was trying not to lose her cool. Clearly, she hadn't planned for him to just lay it all out like that. I appreciate the honesty, I said after a long pause. But that doesn't change anything, my mom cut in then, her voice sharper. It doesn't change the fact that we need you, and you owe us, after everything we've done for you. And there it was again, that entitlement. They really believed I owed them something just because they were my parents. Like all the years of neglect and favoritism didn't matter, and now that they were in trouble I was supposed to bail them out. I don't owe you anything, I said, my voice cold. Not after the way you treated me. You made your choice when you believed Allison over me, when you threw me out and didn't even check if I was okay. Now you want me to save you, that's not how this works. My dad didn't say anything, he just sat there staring at the floor like he was ashamed. But my mom, she wasn't done yet. We're your parents, she said, her voice rising. We raised you, we took care of you and now you're just going to abandon us. I shook my head, almost feeling sorry for her at this point. You didn't take care of me, Aunt Caroline did. You chose Allison and now you're stuck with her, that's on you. My mom looked like she was about to explode, but my dad put a hand on her arm, stopping her from saying whatever was about to come out of her mouth. He stood up, looking me in the eye for the first time since they'd walked in. We understand, he said, his voice steady, but we're not going to push you anymore. We just, we just needed to try. For a second I almost felt bad for him, but then I remembered everything they had put me through and that sympathy disappeared. I hope you figure it out, I said, stepping toward the door and opening it for them, but I'm not going to be part of it. My dad nodded like he'd expected that. My mom, though, gave me one last look, half angry, half pleading, but when she saw I wasn't budging, she stood up and followed him out. Hit that subscribe button now, or you'll be the one asking, wait, what did I miss, while everyone else is cracking up.